Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is reversing motor starters with jogging. Our objective is to take a look at reversing motor starters that enable jogging or inching functions. This lecture operates under the assumption you have watched the friction brakes, jogging, and reversing motor starters with interlocks lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. As you'll recall, paired contactors and reversing motor starters with interlocks allow selective reversal of an industrial three-phase AC motor by interchanging applied phase sequence. The interlocks serve to prevent simultaneous closure of the contactors and direct phase-to-phase -phase contact. Interlocks could use mechanical, electrical, push-button, or a combination of methods. Additionally, you'll recall that the jogging or inching function is characterized by only momentary closure of a contactor, allowing partial rotation of the shaft. Such an action could be used to align a shaft with a coupling or to briefly move an applied load. Jogging or inching is a momentary act and does not use a holding contact. Spring set electrically released friction brakes increase the accuracy of the jogging movement as well as hold the load in position when the motor is de-energized. Previously, we've only discussed jogging on unidirectional motor starters. If we were to incorporate the jogging function into a reversing motor starter, this would be known as a reversing motor starter with jogging. We'll discuss two such implementations, one utilizing a selector switch, the other using additional mechanically interlocked push buttons and a control relay. As you'll recall from our previous discussion of the jogging function as applied to unidirectional motor starters, the jogging action does not utilize a holding circuit. Only when the start button is actively being closed does the electrically released friction brake disengage and the motor rotate. When the start button returns to its deactivated open state, the spring set friction brake is applied and the de-energized motor stops rotating. We can incorporate the selective removal of the holding circuit in an ordinary or reversing motor starter by incorporating a maintained contact two position selector switch. The target table of the selector switch shows that in the run position, the contact is closed. In the jog position, the contact is open. While the selector switch is in the run position, the ladder logic functions as would an ordinary reversing motor starter. When an operator presses and releases forward, the electrically released brake is disengaged and the motor spins clockwise. Notice that when the selector switch is in the run position, the F1 holding contact is engaged and the holding circuit maintains this last asserted state. When the operator presses and releases stop, the F coil is de-energized and the spring set brake is applied at the same time the motor is de-energized. Similarly, when an operator presses and releases reverse, the electrically released brake is disengaged and the energized motor spins counterclockwise. Note that when the selector switch is in the run position, the R1 holding contact is engaged and the holding circuit maintains this last asserted state. The stop button functions similarly. Notice while in its natural deactivated closed state, the maintained contact e-stop in no way, shape, or form affects functionality of this system. When an operator presses and releases forward, the motor spins clockwise. When an operator presses and releases stop, the motor stops ready to initiate another start cycle. When an operator presses and releases reverse, the motor spins counterclockwise. When an operator presses and releases stop, the motor stops, ready to initiate another start cycle. If, however, an operator were to observe an unsafe scenario, by hitting the maintained e-stop, the motor would stop and the system would be disabled. Importantly, due to the maintained rather than momentary nature of the e-stop, the system will remain disabled until the e-stop is reset. Neither the forward nor reverse button will energize either contact or coil, and as such, the primary contacts will not close despite repeated attempts to do so. That's the point. The maintained e-stop has disabled the system. Only after the e-stop has been reset and returned to the closed position can the system now start the motor. Similarly, notice the normally closed overload contact serves to protect the motor from sustained overload conditions in both the forward and reverse mode. In the ready or go state, 
The normally closed overload contact in no way, shape, or form affects functionality of this system. If, however, the motor experienced a sustained overload, the normally closed overload contact would open and de-energize either contact or coil regardless of the rotational direction. Only when the overload has cooled and reset will the ladder logic diagram allow an operator to rotate the motor clockwise or counterclockwise. Note the mechanical interlock prevents the simultaneous closure of the forward and reverse contactors. Now, consider the operation of the same reversing motor starter with the selector switch in the jog position. If an operator were to press forward, the F contactor coil would energize. The primary F contacts would close, as would the holding contact F1. However, due to the open selector switch in the jog position, the holding circuit is not maintained. The electrically released brakes would disengage and the motor would begin spinning clockwise as long as the forward button is being actively closed. As soon as the operator released the forward push button, the spring return would return it to its deactivated open state and de-energized F contactor coil. The primary F contacts would open, as would the auxiliary contact F1. The spring set brakes would apply and the de-energized motor would be brought to a rapid halt. An operator could press forward until such time that the shaft or applied load is in an ideal position and then release the button. The motor would jog to this position and the spring set brake would keep it there. Similarly, with the selector switch in the jog position, if an operator were to press reverse, the R contact or coil would energize. The primary R contacts would close, as would the holding contact R1. However, due to the open selector switch in the jog position, the holding circuit is not maintained. The electrically released brakes would disengage and the motor would begin spinning counterclockwise as long as the operator held the reverse button closed. As soon as the operator released the reverse push button, the spring return would return it to its deactivated open state and de-energize the R contactor coil. The primary R contacts would open, as would auxiliary contact R1. The spring set brakes would apply and the de-energized motor would be brought to a rapid halt. With the selector switch in the jog position, an operator could press reverse until such time the shaft or applied load is in an ideal position and then release the button. The motor would jog to this position and the spring set brake would keep it there. Note that jogging or inching circuits are demanding applications that necessitate contactors rated for this utilization. The closure of the forward or reverse contactor instantaneously and directly connects the motor to full voltage. Such an event is characterized by a large inrush current surge. Ordinarily, a motor would come up to rated speed and inrush current would subside. However, a jogging event is momentary in nature and the contactor must break current in excess of normal full load current. For this reason, contactors used in jogging applications must be rated for this purpose. An AC3 rated contactor is designed to make inrush current, yet only break full load current. In contrast, an AC4 rated contactor is designed to make and break inrush current. Additionally, motors that are frequently jogged could also experience premature overload conditions since the current that characterizes this event is many times that of normal operating conditions. Note as presently implemented, the mechanical interlock between the forward and primary reversing contactor only prevents physical movement of the contact carriers. If an unusually headstrong operator pressed and held forward and reversed simultaneously in either run or jog mode, one contact or contact carrier would move and the other one wouldn't. The coil losing the tug of war would experience premature burnout since its armature never seals in. For this reason, we could upgrade this reversing motor starter with jogging to one also incorporating electrical interlocks. Note the normally closed electrical interlocks R2 and F2 prevent the opposite coil from being energized when an initial mode is asserted. Additionally, this reversing motor starter with jogging can also be modified to include push button interlocking. Note two mechanically interlocked push button packages now enable this reversing motor starter to be plugged. Plugging, if you'll recall, is the immediate reversal of applied phase sequence. The counter torque developed by plugging decelerates the motor 
and quickly reverses direction. Plugging, even more so than jogging, is associated with unusually high current draw and contactors utilized for this application must be rated to handle this event. Note when in forward mode and the selector switch is in the run position, the actuation of the reverse button opens the holding circuit via the now open normally closed side. The F coil de-energizes and its associated contacts return to their deactivated states. The F primary contacts open. The F1 holding contact opens removing the holding circuit. The F2 electrical interlock closes. As soon as the F2 electrical interlock closes, the now closed side of the normally open reverse button energizes the R coil, and its associated contacts change states. The R primary contacts close. The R1 holding contact closes and enables the holding circuit. The R2 electrical interlock opens. The motor rapidly decelerates and begins rotating in the counterclockwise direction via plugging action. An operator can now release the reverse push button and the holding circuit maintains this last asserted state. This reversing motor starter incorporating a run jog selector switch and mechanical, electrical, and push button interlocking allows the motor to both be jogged and plugged all without risking simultaneous closure of the forward and reverse contactors. Let's consider yet another implementation of a reversing motor starter with jogging, this time using additional push buttons instead of a selector switch. Note the latter logic makes use of a control relay and two mechanically interlocked push buttons, one labeled forward jog, stop, and the other labeled reverse jog, stop. The control relay CR and its associated contact CR1 establishes a holding circuit when either the forward or reverse push buttons are closed. The mechanically interlocked jog stop push buttons, however, in effect bypass the holding circuit without energizing the control relay and energize the chosen contactor coil directly. Let's walk through the ladder logic diagram and see how this reversing motor starter enables jogging. If an operator were to press the forward jog stop push button, the F contactor coil would be energized. When the F contactor coil is energized, its associated contacts change states. The F1 holding contact closes, the F2 electrical interlock opens, and the F primary contacts close. The motor begins rotating in the clockwise direction. Note the coil of control relay CR is not energized. This means contact CR1 remains open, and the holding circuit is not established. When an operator releases the forward jog stop push button, the F contactor coil is de-energized and its associated contacts return to their deactivated state. The F primary contacts open, F1 opens, and the F2 electrical interlock closes. Jogging has been accomplished in the forward direction without the use of the holding circuit. If however an operator were to press the forward push button, the F contactor coil would be energized. When the F contactor coil is energized, its associated contacts change states. The F primary contactor closes, the F1 contact closes, and the F2 electrical interlock opens. Since the normally closed side of the mechanically interlocked forward jog stop and reverse jog stop push buttons are still in their natural deactivated normally closed state, the coil of control relay CR is energized. When CR is energized, its associated contacts change states. CR1 closes. An operator can now release the forward push button and the spring return would return it to its normally open deactivated state. Note the holding circuit as established by the CR1 and F1 holding contact maintain the asserted state of both the F contactor coil and the control relay coil. The motor continues to rotate in the clockwise direction. That's the point of the holding circuit and maintains the last asserted state. If an operator were to press the stop button, the F contactor coil and the control relay would be de-energized and the motor would come to a stop. If however an operator pressed forward jog stop, the normally open side being closed would establish yet another path to the F contactor coil. However, the normally closed side being opened would de-energize the coil of control relay CR. 
When de-energized, its associated contacts return to their deactivated state. CR1 opens, breaking the holding circuit. Only when an operator releases forward jog stop is the F contact recoil de-energized and the motor brought to a stop. The reverse push button and reverse jog stop push button perform similar functions, only the motor rotates counterclockwise for these applications. You should find that the reverse push button engages both the reversing contact recoil and the CR control relay coil, thereby establishing a holding circuit with contact CR1. You should find that the reverse jog stop push button does not engage the holding circuit. Additionally, you should find while in reverse mode, the reverse jog stop push button disengages the holding circuit and only when released will the motor be de-energized and brought to a stop. Consider this additional scenario in which an operator has pressed and released the forward push button and the holding circuit is engaged, maintaining this last asserted state. And an operator pressed reverse jog stop via the now open, normally closed side of the reverse jog stop push button, the coil of CR1 is de-energized and its associated contacts return to their deactivated state. CR1 opens, removing the holding contact and de-energizes the F contact or coil. When de-energized, the associated F contacts return to their deactivated state. The F primary contacts open, as does the F1 auxiliary contact. The F2 electrical interlock closes. As soon as the F2 electrical interlock closes, if the operator is maintaining the reverse jog stop push button in its actuated state, the R contact or coil would be energized and the motor is plugged to an immediate reversal. This reversing motor starter with jogging therefore allows the motor to be plugged as well as jogged. You should observe similar behavior if an operator were to press and release reverse and then press and hold forward jog stop. Only rotational direction should change. All right, this about wraps up our introduction to magnetic reversing motor starters with jogging. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at magnetic reversing motor starters with jogging. We examined a reversing motor starter with jogging that selectively enabled or disabled the holding circuit using a selector switch, as well as a reversing motor starter with jogging that selectively enabled or disabled the holding circuit using additional mechanically interlocked push buttons and a control relay. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.